We are cut. Okay, good. I I took a uh, half of an edible and then took a bath with half of uh THC bath salts. So those of all those have both mashed together and created a beautiful rainbow that is me doing this podcast. <coughs> so hooray, we're in uh undiscovered territory. We're in well, the undiscovered I've, I've, country. I've, I've given up edibles uh and I'm gonna have to lay off smoking for a while. I just yeah. can't get around to doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Because, like, I am just really not getting high anymore. Like, my, my body is uh, at a point of tolerance. Like, yeah. oh, I, I'll probably be high by the end of the show, but it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It reminds me way, way back in my drinking days when I would have to drink a six-pack as quick as possible. To get a buzz because my alcohol wow. tolerance is so fucking high, it's yeah. kind of like that. So like, uh, when I go get pot, I will treat myself to a can of Keith, and I'll knock that whole fucking can back, and I'll, yeah, you know, maybe I'll be kind of high. Yeah. Are, are you are you gonna start dabbing? Am I gonna start dabbing now? I think I should just lay off for a little while. Cool. It, it, one is, of the things which, is, which makes me sad. Uh, one of the things that helps me is that I wake up and I go, "Okay, I got to wake up, Eleanor. I got to get Eleanor to school. I got to wake up now," which is just a, an entire job in and of itself. And then get Mal to school. And then I gotta make sure Maxwell eats because Maxwell won't eat if if you if you have to like make him eat. And then uh, set up school for him and start doing school and then make lunch and then do all of this. And then I have to run and do these errands and pick up this medication and then pick up that and then go here and then get food and all of this. And so I'm so busy that I'm like, I can't do any weed. I can't do any edibles. I can't smoke. I can't do anything. I got to focus on what I have to do for the day. And then finally, it's like six, seven, eight o'clock. And I'm like, OK, I'm, got, I'm done leaving the house. Finally, I can get high, and by the time I do that, I'm, it, it just hits so hard. And then some days I'll be so exhausted I'll forget to do the edibles, and then I won't get high until like a day or two, and so that helps me with my tolerance, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So in the weekends, I try and get very high, because <laughs> this, is, this, is my, this is my time to exhale, finally. Funny! Yes. I have the AMC A list, and what that is is a subscription service. And so, for 19.95 a month, I get up to three movies a week free. And I really took advantage of it at first. From December 2018 to March 2020, I saw a whopping 177 showings in a 66-week period of time. And then the pandemic ruined my streak, so fuck off, pandemic. But now movies are back open, and so am I. So it's time. Once again, for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. -na 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 -na. This week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 23rd week back in theaters, and in that time I have seen a total of 42 movies in theaters, which is not that bad. I, I, I started off, you know, one one movie a week, maybe two movies a week. I'm trying not to stress with the details. Anywho, this week I saw the following two movies in theaters. The new Disney animated film Encanto. Okay. And the new horror film Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. This week was specifically no drama week because we're entering award season and I'm already sick of it. I'm bored with award season. Yes. So every week I pick a, a Steve Stubbs movie of the week. But before we do that, let's discuss the movie that was not chosen as my movie pick of the week. Uh, the Disney film Encanto. This is the fourth Disney animated film done uh, <coughs> in Latin America. A Latin American-centric Disney animated film. Not including Coco. 
which is set in Mexico slash the land of the dead, because that's a Disney Pixar animated film. Yeah. I'm talking about Walt Disney Animation Studios. They have made four films centered in Latin American culture. There yeah. was Saludos Amigos, which is okay, but what's, what's great about it is the ending when you first meet uh, Joe Carioca and uh, the song Brazil. Yeah. Legendary song Brazil. That was the theme to a carnival because every year they, Brazil does carnival and every year someone writes a song that is chosen as the theme to carnival and it came out and it was popular in Latin America and that was it. And then while Disney went to Latin America to film Saludos Amigos and he's like, hey, this song Brazil, I love it. And he put it in his animated film Saludos Amigos and that is what made the song Brazil popular in America. It was Walt Disney that popularized that for the world. Yeah. And that was from this movie, Saludos Amigos. And then after that was the Three Caballeros. And then nothing for the longest time until Disney said, we're doing a very serious film about uh, Latin American culture. And it's, and it's called... Kingdom of the Sun. Oh, wait. Never mind. It's a really ridiculous fucking comedy now called The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. You did a whole shap about it. And now this movie, Encanto. And Encanto is a good film. I like it. It's entertaining. And, and uh, there's music by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And you can tell. And it's not always... For good reasons, but hey, um, I it, probably am probably one of the last people on the planet who couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was like I was maybe one of, I heard part of a song from Hamilton once. Hey, hey, we're the Hamiltons. People say we're Hamiltoning around. <laughs> we're too busy being a douchebag. He, Good he has become one of these people who I am more familiar with him than anything he's done. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so I could pick him out of a crowd. If yeah. you showed me a picture of him, yep, that's Lynn manuel Miranda. Yeah. Yeah. But, did Hamilton. I don't know anything about it, though. Yeah. Well, Encanto's a good film, and I like it, but I when you Mike look... I remember Mike Pence got booed there, so yeah. probably a good play. Yeah. Uh, Encanto's a good film, but when you look at it lined up with the other three Latin American Disney animated movies, I mean... This would be fourth in that list. Yeah. You know? So that says something. Plus, this is a film set in Colombia, about a Colombian family in Colombia. But a large portion of, like, the traditions and the way that they act and, and, and the way that they dress and everything, a large portion of the film seems to be set in Mexican culture and Mexican traditions. And there was a part of me that feels like, um, Disney, you know that Colombia and Mexico were different, right? You're aware yeah. of this. And so just to, so I started thinking that, and I also started thinking that, like, hey, every race gets its own movie in Disney. Every nationality gets its own princess. But when it comes to Mexico, they always want to throw Mexico in with like, okay, here's a film about a Chinese hero. Here's a film about a Polynesian hero. Here's a film about a Japanese hero. Here's a film about an Irish hero. Here is a general film about all of our neighbors south of the border. <laughs> you know? And it's like, fuck, why, why do... Why is Mexico thrown into a general Latin American category? So I decided to look up, like, uh, I know Lin-Manuel Miranda, you know, from yeah. Puerto Rico, and he wrote the music, and it's like, cool, that, that's awesome, but 
let me see who directed it. And I looked it up, and there were two directors. The whitest men you've ever seen. <laughs> Might as well be like John <coughs> Smith and Michael O'Shaughnessy. <coughs> That they got to direct a Colombian animated film. Yeah. And so the movie is good, but. It's no Coco. You know, yeah, it's no Coco. It's no Book of the Dead, which. Uh, it, no, the Book of Life. That's the name of That's the movie I'm thinking of. The Book of Life was Coco a few years before Coco. So there were some people that when Coco came out said, didn't this movie already come out? And it's like, no, you're thinking of, of Book of the Living, Book of Life, Book of Life, which was Coco pre-Coco. So that's, that's my thoughts on Encanto. And finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is Resident Evil. Welcome to Reboot City. Yes, okay, okay. I, I am interested in this movie, so please. So, Enlighten um, me. <clears throat> at first I wasn't going to see this film because I looked it up. This is the seventh fucking Resident Evil movie. Yeah. How is this the seventh film and I haven't watched a single fucking movie? And that's... And there are also a lot of Resident Evil, like, 3D animated films. Yeah. yeah the they same all thing kind of Mortal suck Kombat. for any of those I saw. Yeah. So, so I wasn't going to see the film, because, like, this is the seventh movie, and it's rebooting the Resident Evil franchise, but I never saw any of the other Resident Evil movies. I never saw Mila Jova, whatever, you know, in, like, all leather and doing flips and whatever the fuck. I never saw any of those. So maybe I shouldn't see this. And then I remembered Downton Abbey. Okay. I never saw a single goddamn episode of Downton Abbey, but the movie was very pleasant. Yes. So I'm like, if I can go see Downton Abbey the movie, I can go see Resident Evil Welcome to Reboot City. Another, another word for pleasant... Yeah. Boring. Yeah, it, it it was it was it was it was a delightful jaunt into a very uh fancy hoity toity world. Yeah. And it's like it's nice, you know, it's like Scottsdale. It's nice to visit, it's horrible to live in. So I liked going to the movie. I got a little taste of Downton Abbey without having to sit through, I don't know, eight fucking seasons or whatever. So, uh, one of the things that I've been saying this whole week, and it's very much the truth, is that I haven't played a single Resident Evil game. I've never played one. I've never sat down and played it. But one thing I did do is buy drugs in the 90s. Yes. In the late 90s, early 2000s, I, ha I did buy drugs and... It, it Now, you go to the store, you tell them what you want, and you purchase it, you get a receipt for drugs. Yes. Back in my day, you had to pretend to be friends with a shifty-ass dealer, which meant not just going and getting your drugs, you got to go into their apartment and sit down and watch them play Resident Evil for an hour until they give you your bag of skunkweed. Yes. And they were always playing Resident Evil. That's like, somehow, in my mind, it was always a Resident Evil game. And it's like, oh, I got to go through this mansion that somehow it's just one mansion, but somehow it's five hours of slowly walking through corridors yeah. and there's no lights. And I don't know how there's fog in the mansion, but there's fog everywhere. And oh no, I'm at the police precinct. What, zombies? We better shoot them. And now, oh, we better get more weapons. We have to go through the police precinct. There's no lights. Why is there fog in the police precinct? So one positive of the Resident Evil reboot, it's very loyal to the early Resident Evil games. 
a lot of the film is we need to find our partners. But first, we got to slowly walk up these stairs and down this corridor. Jump scare! And it's like, okay, that's the first two blocky PlayStation 1 games. It's not like games back then really had some huge fucking plot line going on yeah. to begin with. Yeah. Just kind of a sketch to get you a feel for the game. But the movies immediately spun right into their own thing, having nothing to do with the games at all anymore. And they were fun in their own right. You should check a couple of them out. You know, it's like yeah. it's dropping a female superhero into the middle of a zombie movie. Yeah, so, uh, like, the Resident Evil film is kind of dumb and kind of slow, but I saw enough Resident Evil 1 and 2 to know that means this is very loyal to the source material. Yes. A lot of a female police officer slowly walking through the woods. What's that behind me? Now I need to go into this spooky mansion. What's that noise? Oh no, a horde! Bang, bang, bang! And it's like, okay, this is the game. So that's good. You know, it's loyal to its source material. That being that being said, and, and it is, also gave us it also gave us Shaun of the Dead. Yes, yes, it did. But but here's had the thing: Simon Pegg not been playing Resident Evil all night. Yeah, in spaced. In spaced, yeah, I remember spaced. Then we would not have Dawn and Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing that I think that most uh, professional critics don't get. Uh, Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City is shit, and I loved it. Cool. Cause, cause we're in reboots. We're in Oscar bait season right now. And it's like, if I had to pick between Will Smith's touching, heartbreaking performance in uh, King Richard or Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, I'm going to watch the, the stupid zombie film because at least that's, like, fun. It's dumb and shitty, and you like it, you know? It's fun, and I didn't know who any of the characters was. I knew enough to know who Jill Valentine was. Yeah. I know that, but I didn't know any of the other characters. I was hoping for a ten-foot-tall, big, busty vampire, but that's not that's not for another few movies. But this was fun, and it was enjoyable, and all oh, the cast was a veritable who's who of where the fuck do I know you from? Ha! <laughs> yeah. Donald Logue was in it. Uh, one of one of the Umbrella Academy was in it. The one, the one who's who's who has a gorilla's body. He was in it. Uh, the star of the film was in the movie Crawl, which I saw during my marathon in 2019. It's about a woman and she's stuck in a flooding house with an alligator. It was really dumb, and I loved it. And so, like, yeah, it, there were there were people in it, and. Uh, yeah, it was all right. It was it was fun. Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City. If they made more, I would I would go see those. It was it was dumb and I liked it. Well, it's also one of those movies like, <coughs> what the fuck do you expect out of it? Yeah, you know, it's a fucking fact... Resident Evil movie. Yeah. So like like I I would go into a movie like that with very little expectation, except hopefully I'm entertained. And yeah, it was it. entertaining. I had fun. I'm not fun. expecting great acting. I'm not expecting great cinematography. The zombies better be fucking good, though. Uh, it's... It didn't come out in February. There you go. That's what I can say about this movie. It came out in December and not January. So that's a positive in my book. And that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Next week, I'm going to see the Irish drama Belfast. Okay. And I'm not sure what else. I don't want to see West Side Story, but I would see that over Clifford. Really trying to avoid Clifford. Yeah. But 
we'll see. I don't know what else I'm seeing next week. But uh, be sure and join us next week for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that.